from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Thursday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parham, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. Jeffrey Wright joining us as always on this Thursday. We go through a uh, certain hypothetical with a certain former Ole Miss head football coach. Um, did not expect that going into the show today. That the not- Joe Lee Dunn story. <laughs> that did. Steve Sloan did not make it into uh, into prep this morning, but nonetheless. Uh, here we are. So Jeffrey will join us here in a little while. We'll talk a little uh, football. We'll talk content at Rebel Grove. Got some thoughts on the uh, journalism school thing that blew up last night. And, I think uh, people and are more. anxiously awaiting your thoughts on this. You know. You sort of promised that you would let it you, you, you'd let it go today. Yeah, and I'm, well, I've really kind of – I've talked to a lot of people um, since I first saw it. It kind of had the shock value when you first see it last night. Um I've got a lot of different thoughts. I, I mean, I, I probably people are going to want a little more fire and brimstone. I have some in some ways, but not not every way. So we'll go through it in a minute. But um, anyway, that and uh, and plenty more. Matt Luke talked to us last night. That is up on the site at rebelgrove dot com. His why video. will no one ask tough questions, Chase? Yeah, I, I, the question was asked about DK's comment. It was not in the video that I put up. I'm sure it was in someone's video, but I thought after like three and a half minutes we'd seen enough video, so I switched to a recorder um, at, at that point. And, you know, w- w- come on, what, what's Matt going to do? Is he going to blast DK Metcalf? Is he going to blast Phil Longo? No, he just said that they had really good practice days on Tuesday and Wednesday, and he likes where their focus is headed to Kent State. Okay, moving on. Again, really good wide receivers are confident people. Yeah, blown away. If DK's the first one. If you've ever met a wide receiver. <laughs> or the guys that cover wide receivers. Or cornerbacks. Those are different cats. Yes. Because if you're not, you won't make it mentally. Good corners can get beat 11 times in the row, go back to the line of scrimmage, and he's talking crap again on the 12th. Absolutely. I've never been beaten. Here we go. Yes. Who's the guy with the Jaguars? Ramsey? Yeah. He's never been beaten in his li- in his mind. He's never lost a one-on-one. Yeah. You can show him the film the next day. He doesn't nah. see it. Literally just. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's required. Short-term memory loss. It's like being a closer in baseball. Yeah. That five-run spot that you gave up the night before to lose the game, it didn't happen. Yeah. I'm the most dominant pitcher in the world. Give me the ball. I'm striking everyone out. Give me the ball. But what what happened last night was I don't remember it. Literally. It's totally a different deal. So, of course, DK Metcalf was confident. In his eyes, what he said Tuesday night was not shocking. Yeah, we just took him lightly. What he's really thinking is, what he was really thinking was, I'd like another shot at him. Yeah, what I did on the first play, I could do again. Yeah, I should have done that seven times. Yeah. That's what he was thinking. So that people wanting to turn this into a, 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 a scandal, you're you're barking up the wrong tree. So old Miss Kent State, eleven o'clock on Saturday, as we tell you every day this week. If you're tailgating, if you're catering, let the Oxford Exxon be the place to get that. Three slabs of ribs, thirty three dollars. A couple pounds of pulled pork, one pound of pulled pork, quart size sides as well. A lot of options there from the Oxford Exxon, just stop into the Oxford Crystal, maybe on the way, get some minute cheese bites, take those in with you, everybody loves those as well. They're on Highway 6 West, Speed Pass Plus, save money, be efficient as well at the pump. So all those things, Highway 6 West, Oxford Exxon, again, coming to you from the Clark Ford Studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, 662-257-1900. Call the number, ask for Corey Clark, tell Corey what new Ford you're looking for. Um, he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. It's really simple. It's right to the bottom line. There's no haggling. It's just an easy car buying experience. You get great service after the sale. Corey wants to be your car guy. He wants to be your truck guy. He wants to build a long-term relationship, and he'll go the extra mile to do it. Um, At the end of your deal, tell Corey that you heard about Clark Ford on the podcast. You can mention this podcast or any of our other family of podcasts, and you will save $500 off the bottom line from Clark Ford and Amory, 662-257-1900. 
Be at Funky's tonight, 5.30 for that. Specials, uh, $2 domestics, $12 one-topping pizza. So come drink, hang out, talk. We're going to deep dive into Ole Miss football a little bit. What's going on? How do you fix it? That's kind of our uh, our plan for tonight to give you a little bit of a heads up. So we'll uh, we'll have an assist from Russell Johnson as well with that. So that's kind of a big part headed. of how you fix it is recruiting, and yeah. we'll dive into the recruiting part. So all that uh, – Kind of a hybrid, if you will, of the soft verbal and the Oxford Exxon podcast tonight. Um, there is a soft verbal dropping today as today well. It has a lot of basketball recruiting yeah. and football recruiting. Um, so you'll want to listen to it as well. So if you like recruiting, you're you're about to just get just get a big dose. Yeah. So all right. Um, la- yesterday afternoon, sometime I don't know. I noticed it five thirty six o'clock last night. It was actually blowing up while I was waiting in a takeout line as we go back to yesterday's conversation. Uh, Ed Meek, um, names on the journalism building, the, 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 the school of new media at, at Ole Miss, prominent donor, given a lot of money, former professor, um, was the university's assistant vice chancellor for public relations and marketing for 37 years. Um, again, very prominent person in Mississippi media, uh, circles, very active on social media in a lot of good ways, um, has, has advocated for you know Kroger to be better in a lot of ways in the last few months some things have gotten done there have to give some credit but very very active on social media in ways that also were kind of reckless so that's where what happened yesterday um I'll read the post here it says uh on the Oxford Square Saturday night I hesitated until now to publish the pictures but I think it's important that our community see what the camera is seeing at 2 a.m after a ball game I hear there were 180 police working the weekend but all of the pictures, late night and fights and scenes, I've seen no police presence. Chief of Police Joey East is quoted in the Mississippi and is saying police made 40 arrests and there were fights in most venues. Enough. Oxford and Ole Miss leaders have to get on top of this before it's too late. A 3% decline in enrollment is nothing compared to what we will see if this continues and real estate values will plummet, as will tax revenue. We all share in the responsibility to protect the values we hold dear that have made Oxford and Ole Miss known nationally. Okay, let's break that down first as I kind of get into this a little bit. Um, okay. The second paragraph is perfectly fine. Yes, there are issues on game weekends on the square and in town with fights and violence and all sorts of stuff. No doubt. So an opinion saying so is perfectly acceptable completely. Now, look. To the point where someone like you who has a lot of friends here and has a very active social life, you do not go out on the square with rare exception on Friday and Saturday night of football weekends. Oh, absolutely. And it's not I, – I never think, oh, I'm not safe, but just the crowds, I'm not in the mood to the deal hassle. with them. Yeah, 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 right. So, look, and part of that is because Oxford has become a very, very prominent location on game weekends. It is outgrown – it outgrows itself on these seven weekends. And there's a certain amount of, frankly, riffraff that is unavoidable given location and demographics to other areas around and everything else. It just is what it is. Frankly – a lot of the – I won't even use the word riffraff, but Oxford, the square is so – I've been here 10 years. Yeah. The square on Friday night, on Saturday night, is so much busier every weekend than it used to be because people come from – I mean, you, sometimes you have to remember if you don't live here – and I'm not talking down to anybody, but if you draw a circle 30 miles a radius mm-hmm. – around Oxford, well, there aren't exactly a lot of happening places. Yeah, I know Water Valley's got a spot here and a spot there, and New Albany's got a spot. And, but this is where the funnel empties out on the weekend. But this is where everyone comes, yeah. yeah. And so it, 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 it gets – Game weekends escalate beyond that, and it's a yeah. very difficult situation for police. Now, look, late nights, I mean, the Lyric especially, I know nothing about how they run operations, but they're in the news way too much. There is a problem that has to be contained there and however you want to do that, period. I don't think that's debatable. Um, The fights are a huge problem. They're going to happen every game weekend because you have 100,000 people coming into a town. Most people that don't live here, they get drunk, it escalates, and it turns into things. Very difficult job for police. That's not changing how we live on Tuesday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. However... I get it. So, nonetheless, sure, I don't sure. I, I don't want to get bogged down, but second paragraph's fine. All good with Ed there. Okay. The first paragraph, there were plenty of videos and things from the weekend to show problems. Fights in the Grove, the two dudes beating up each other like two fraternity dudes, whatever. 
He picks two photos. Or he could have written the post without a photo. Well, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. And absolutely, that, that would have been the way to go. Just put your second paragraph and call it a day, and nobody's even talking right now. This thing's whatever. Instead, uses two photos of two African-American females that are not breaking any law whatsoever. Nothing. Doing nothing but standing on sidewalks. And are not dressed in any way that you wouldn't find with a certain percentage of the population on a game day Saturday, no matter the demographic or the skin color or anything else. Period. Right. So it's borrowing trouble in so many ways that is unnecessary here. Look, I I got asked this point blank last night. I have no evidence in my life, and I know him a little bit, to suggest that Ed Meek is racist. I don't necessarily think Ed Meek is racist. I don't. I think he is tone deaf. I think for a person that had the job of public relations for a university does not understand today's, to borrow a word from Freeze, climate, today's um, way to use social media appropriately. And I think that he probably wasn't thinking. I think it was dumb more than anything else and tone deaf. Say that. I don't know the man, so I can't. Well, I, mean, it's I, hard. Can't, I can't go in his head and go, oh, he absolutely meant race. Right. I can't no, do sure. that. That's not no. fair. No, and I, what I'm saying, I, I literally can't. I have no, I, I have no background of I've I've only had one interaction with him in my entire life. It was on Facebook. It wasn't even in person. Um, he has a very low opinion of me. I I don't know him. Um, you know, I I did not know him when I was a student uh, here. I've got a good bit of sweat sweat equity into that program. I'm an advocate of student media. I've got a story this month in the Meek Magazine of all things. Um. He's done a lot through fin- financial purposes to help that area. However, you know, he, he started HottyTotty.com. Um, it is now being housed in the journalism building, which creates a whole other set of scenarios. But this what's funny about this. I'm trying to figure out how to say this as succinctly as possible. A lot of people that were up in arms last night were very frustrated by that post because I've had some people say that, you know, Money is the reason that people's names are on buildings, and that doesn't necessarily change the education. And no, it doesn't. But there is a certain standard that the name bearer has to go by. You're not, sure. you're not exempt from criticism or problems just because you gave enough money to put your name on a building. Agreed. I mean, you know, Scruggs dealt with some of the same things. I mean, that's it, it, that, that's not a free pass for ultimate entitlement. And that's the way it comes off a lot of times. Um. But point being, the people that are actually in journalism circles, HottyTotty.com, and I don't know how it's operating now. I don't know how it's operating once it's got become somewhat of an arm with the university. I think they had to keep the full-time employees at HottyTotty.com, but it's it's a part of the Ole Miss me- new media school in some ways, however that works. Um, maybe it's very similar to the DM where it's independent. I don't know. Okay. Point being, HottyTotty.com has a reputation in journalism circles for stealing copyrighted photos for giving zero attribution to stories they post online, um, including from Ole Miss students. And multiple people tweeting me last night saying, hey, they just took what I wrote. They took a good bit of legwork, put it on their site with no attribution, no byline, nothing. It has come across as nothing more than a vehicle for advertising dollars at the ex- at the expense of everything that the journalism school actually teaches. That's what it's come across as. Right, wrong, don't know. That's what it looks like. Um, and when your name is attached to that, everybody knows your name is attached to that, but your name's also attached to a new media and journalism school that, frankly, is pretty technologically savvy, is really coming on in a lot of areas. Will Norton, the uh, the dean, has done a fabulous job over there in the last few years. Um, they have multiple assistant deans that are African-American, I think, over there. I mean, it just... There's no thought putting in it, into this. It is stupid, and any repercussions that come are frankly deserved is the way we are right now. So, What do you think the repercussions will be? I thought about that all night, and I'm kind of having a hard time with it because I'm not a big pitchfork mafia person. I'm not necessarily the guy that goes, oh, pull names from everything. But, no, there's – I mean, but – you know, it, it shouldn't be a silent thing either. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still kind of thinking that out. That's not a decision you make in 12 hours, even if you were a decision holder. So I'm not sure. Um, a, proper, that, a properly worded apologies 
not changing things, right? Well, no, and made one apology and then deleted it and then made another one and still doesn't really say anything. It was more of that, hey, if you're offended, I'm sorry you're offended kind of deals. Um, to Jeffrey Vitter's credit last night, he condemned it almost immediately. And as much as we talk about Vitter, he, was, he did an excellent job of making a comment on Ed's post and then sharing it. And then once it looks like Ed had either edited or deleted his original, Vitter made sure to make keep his context appropriate in there um trying to find it now as i'm uh as i'm scrolling through because vitter did have a uh, comment vitter says while we all want to ensure a safe family-friendly environment at the university and in oxford i must condemn the tone and content of ed Meek's post from earlier today the photos in his post suggest an unjustified racial overtone that is highly offensive ed i urge you to withdraw your comment and apologize to anyone offended so v- jeff vitter's comment yesterday the uh, the School of New Media with Norton and all the uh, assistant deans also put out a statement I saying it was one. not indicative whatsoever of uh, of them. I mean, again, if you know, prominent um, stature comes with responsibility, pros and cons, and completely failed in that. I mean, any, you know what pissed me off more than anything else? Because I mean, I'm telling you, like I said, I Ralph Brasseth, my director when I was at the Ole Miss uh, Studio Media Center, he always said, you know. The engineering people, when they break their toothpick bridges, they aren't putting them out on display every day. You know, you, you learn, you make mistakes, you learn from it, and you you get real life experience. And obviously, this was another real life experience. But I give them a lot of credit last night. They covered the story really well from the hand that feeds them. And sometimes for students, that's very t- difficult to do. Advisors didn't step in. They called Ed Meek and he hung up on them. And frankly, that pissed me off more than anything else. It's like your name is on the building. Your your entire reputation is to foster student learning experience through journalism and new media. And you can't give a quote and just say you screwed up. You hang up on the student media center. It, it, it's, it, it shows a sense of entitlement. It shows tone deafness. And frankly, it shows that I made my post and now I'm going to take my ball and go home. Yeah, I, I debated last night whether I would say anything about this today because I've only had one interaction with him it was it, it, it was it was not positive um, I've just kind of elected to kind of keep my thoughts to myself I rarely do that but I don't there's 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 not much I can say I, I don't I don't know him um, I, I'm not I'm not involved with Ole Miss's student media the way that, that you were and, and, and are. I mean, I was a long, long, long time ago, but, but I don't, I don't have a, a, a relationship with the university the way that you do. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just defer to you. Yeah. I mean, I, I've talked to some different journalism people, some employees in the university are very frustrated this morning. I, I know they had a meeting at 7 a.m. with faculty and staff to talk through it or do whatever they're doing. I have no idea what the content of that meeting is. But so that, that's really where my applause comes right now is to Vitter, is to Norton for handling it as well as possible, as quickly as possible as they could. You know, I mean, and again, a lot of times I, I hate the social media reaction, but when the the initial screw up was on social media, it's kind of unavo- un- unavoidable. That that's the medium that was picked. So it's damaging for the for the. I mean, not not long term. You know me; I've always said, man, if anything, what it's social- damaging from the standpoint is it's the exact thing they fight every well, day. That was my point. And then here you and go. Then here's a very prominent person uh, whose name is on a building. And and it's because I mean even take out the race if you just had picked photos of people actually committing crimes or violence even okay great if you'd run great uh, put a link to one of the videos of the yeah. brawl okay all good because I mean in that regard I'm with him that stuff can't continue to happen someone eventually is going an innocent person's going to get shot and I don't b- condemn Joey East at all I mean. Th- like you said this morning before we went on, I mean, look, you can't, you can't staff for an entire year of this because it's not realistic. It's seven days there's a year. A, there's a budget. Seven nights a year, and cops aren't exactly making two hundred grand a year. You get all the horses out, you contract out, and you do the best you yeah, can. Yeah, and, and I have absolutely zero doubt that Joey East, uh, who probably worked last weekend with the pretty heavy heart, um, that they did the best they could. I, you can't control everything. 
Yeah. It is a problem. It is a problem that is coming because of growth, and it's, it is it, it is a negative coming from a lot of positives, but it still is what it is. And uh, Oxford deals with some issues that are completely beyond Oxford's control. Yeah. Oxford deals with issues that are major issues in Batesville and Clarksdale that bleed into Oxford, and there's nothing – Joey East and Robin Tannehill could sit down every morning and come up with strategies, and there's nothing they can really do to completely control that. They have no jurisdiction over the roots of those issues. I mean, they can they can have a summit that is the most productive summit in the history of summits, and I don't know that they can really do a lot about that. Now, in saying that, something's got to happen at the lyric. I mean, just as a citizen, it, it's it, it, when you have multiple issues that don't appear to be happening elsewhere, you have a problem. Yeah. And, but I, I mean, you have a problem. I don't know what that problem is, but well, you have a problem. I always jokingly call you the mayor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the mayor. I'm glad I'm not having to make those decisions. I'm glad I'm not the chief, chief of police. You talk about two jobs I don't want. I'm glad someone does them. I'm glad quality people do them, but I couldn't do them. Because it's very sensitive. Dan Wolken calling for Meek's name to be removed from the journalism school 11 hours ago. Yeah, I'm not. To me, this is the issue with Wolken here. I've lived here for 11 years. I went to school at that, at that, at that school. I don't have a relationship with it, and I'm able to keep my comments to myself. I'm able to, to be rational. Dan Wolken has no connection at all, isn't here, doesn't know the people involved, and, and just from a, a 10,000 feet drops his bombs. Yeah. It's really irresponsible on Dan's part. It, I mean, it would be irresponsible for me, and I live here. Yeah. And I, I just don't know the people involved. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not connected to it. I don't yeah. have. But bottom line, it's just a frustration because other than financial, it feels like from an action standpoint, there's nothing to foster a positive student media experience whatsoever is the way it comes across. So, And that's coming from people I know that are students, coming from people I know that work in that in some capacity. It comes from a lot of different places. I will say that, that hanging up, and I'll say this from a journalism standpoint, from a journalist experience standpoint, is indicative of someone either hiding from it or someone who truly doesn't understand the ramifications of what his or her actions were. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the hanging up was just... Well, it's ill-advised from a public relations standpoint, yeah. but as someone who is supposedly an advocate for journalism, you probably, sh- you probably should have given a... Or at least given a, I can't comment at this time. His initial apology was, I apologize to those offended by my post. My intent was to point out we have a problem in the Grove and on the square. That was it. And then I'll say this. Does Oxford have any more of a problem than anywhere else? I would assume it's very similar on game days to any other SEC town not named Nashville. Yeah, I mean, I saw Athens. I saw the pictures in Lexington when uh, Kentucky beat Florida. Yeah, and they turned a car over and they were jumping up and down on top of a car. It wasn't the greatest look in the world. And those appeared to be white kids, for the record. Yeah, I don't know. It beats me. I, 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 everybody says we have a problem. Um, I don't go to the Grove. I've, what I hear about the Grove is that it's just really drunk. Which okay, I mean, I, I get it. Um, I don't know about the square at, at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning because I don't really want to be on the square at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, any morning, Tuesday morning, Saturday morning, football weekend, not football weekend. I I, I don't know, so I can't comment. It would be, it would be more appropriate if he wanted to really make a statement. If he really wanted to make a statement, a story that could have been done, he could have done a story where he talked to Jeffrey Vitter where he talked to Robin Tannehill, where he talked to Joey East about do we or do we not have a problem on the square and on the Grove, in the Grove on football weekends. Mike would have gotten some productive comments because I'm sure that there are things that happen that Robin and, and Joey East and um, Jeffrey Vitter and, and others at Ole Miss and the city of Oxford find disturbing. And they might have opened up and talked about it. I don't know. Yeah. Beats me. 
All right, we'll move on uh, here. We'll go to Jeffrey in one second for the I'll Tell You the Podcast, brought to you in part by Oxford Wine and Spirits. Speaking of, to uh, responsibly handle your alcohol this weekend, come in on Fridays, come in today as well. Spend $150 or more. Tell them you heard about the podcast. I'll take 10% off liquor, 5% off wine at Oxford Wine and Spirits, located next to Lost Pizza on College Hill Road, 5% below industry standards for the prices already. And then you get those additional discounts. All the Cathead products, some better bourbon coming in the last week or so as well. So a lot of different options there on College Hill Road next to Lost Pizza. It's Oxford Wine and Spirits. Jeffrey Wright and all other guests join us on the Billy's Pecans Hotline, Billy's Pecans in Crenshaw, Mississippi. But you don't have to go to Crenshaw to uh, get their product. It's fantastic. It is so professionally uh, packaged and shipped and it's fresh and delicious. It's billyspecans.com, B-I-L-L-I-E-S, pecans.com. All the different varieties of pecans we tell you about all the time. Toasted, uh, the uh, s- sweet, spicy, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the cinnamon sugar. They, they ought to try sweet and spicy. That would be interesting on pecans. They've got uh, all the different chocolate pecans, the um, cheese crispies, coffee cakes, and more. It's billyspecans.com. Uh, Megan Phillips with LAH Real Estate is the person to call for all your real estate needs in the Birmingham area. With almost a decade of experience, Megan's knowledge and expertise can help you buy or sell your home today. So please visit her website at MeganMPhillips.com. That's M-E-A-G-A-N-M Phillips.com. Or call Megan at 205-602-7929. Again, 205-602-7929. Uh, the podcast also brought to you by 7 South Tailgating. If you're coming up, for the game on Saturday. Uh, it's not too late. Get in touch with Kyle Thornton and the people there at 7 South. Let them take care of all of your tailgating needs. They're celebrating 10 years of business this season. Try them once. You'll never tailgate without them again. Uh, they'll set up your own personal gear, or you can rent everything from them. No one matches their customer service, their attention to detail at 7 South tailgating.com. The podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank. OUB locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB is offering one-year CDs at 1.75% APY, three-year triple option CDs paying 2.01% APY. With the three-year term, customers can deposit once during the term, withdraw once during the term, and or bump the rate if OUB's three-year rate rises. To learn more about OUB, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Now Jeffrey Wright on the Billy's Pecans Hotline. Jeffrey, good morning. We'll talk a lot of college football today. Let's open up here because there's a lot of stats coming out on Monday even after their big win on the Plains, what are you making of LSU? Joe Burrow not making mistakes, also not really doing anything offensively whatsoever, averaging uh, very few yards per pass, gets SEC Player of the Week on a week that he, I think, uh, completed 40% of his passes for less than 300 yards. It was a team uh, award more than a player award, but they're winning games. They don't have to give it back, even though they seem to kind of steal one, and they are uh, in pretty good shape. They have a pretty good record midway through the season. No, no, no. We, we will get to LSU in a moment, but first and foremost, we have to start with an apology. And the great ones look in the mirror, and I took a look in the mirror. As I was listening to the Oxford Exxon podcast yesterday, because not only am I, I a former <laughs> member of the show, I'm also a fan of the show. Okay. And when we got into the discussions about a lot of um, rub and tugs, I realized yesterday that we missed the easiest joke in the history of the world and hand up. It's on me. How scared should I be right now? Not that scared. Okay. If Hugh Freeze would have just figured focused on RPOs instead of RTOs, yes, rub tug options, then he still would be having, he'd still be employed. It's not the climate in America. It's the fact that he was more focused on RTOs than RPOs. And I, for one, I'm ashamed that I missed something so easy and a joke so pure, but I do owe I do owe this listening audience an apology, and for that, I truly am remorseful. If I tr- because truly because you're right, it is an RTO. It it, yes, it, it is. is an option. Yes, it is. Well, that begs the question: Does the masseuse have the option? Because I'd like to think the masseuse is taking what the defense gives her, and if the defense is giving her more money, then yes, she has the option to pull it. 
so I, I, I give up. It's good though. I'm, I'm impressed. I would think. I would think the more that you are, as the offense, the more that you are, mm-hmm. uh, the more f- uh, financial uh, reward there is for the yes. defense. I would think there's more of the R and less of the T. Yes. That's why I think truly, because it does beg the question who has the option. And I think that's truly why the masseuse at the end of the day is the one that, that has to that has to make the that has to make the decision. And the Seuss ultimately has has the option, but the well, she's got the ball in her hands. The but the person that the the, the the offense does dictate, correct by payment which route is more likely. Mm-hmm. The R mm-hmm. or the T. Yes, yes. A little bit of a but real it, question here that Neil and I were discussing a second ago. In some ways, how long is he the coach if his personal life is completely clean? Is he fired after this year? What what, what, what what's going on? I think it would have been after last year. Do you really? Yeah. So I think last year was I think last year was going south. Five and, and seven probation, and then whatever they went last year, four and eight with freeze. Ooh, I think he'd be getting this year, and I think it would be volatile. But now I, Jeffrey could talk me into his. This isn't a, a vehement disagreement. Uh huh. So let's say so Matt went six and six. Let's say freeze right. would have gone five and seven. Yeah, give him four and eight or five and seven. Okay. And I, no, I'm giving him. I, I think that's a four and eight team, and I don't think they win in Starkville. Well, they, they don't win in Starkville, period, unless Fitzgerald breaks his his leg, and 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 they, yeah, we, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I think that team, if, if was, they go that four team and eight, so out of freeze that I don't think they would have. I think Matt did a good job of galvanizing that team. No it's doubt. the thing that we've always talked about when you run the risk of giving it the interim job to somebody who really wants the job. That guy can usually rally a team for a season, for a oh, brief oh, period. There's no and doubt, no matter what that, you think yeah. of Matt Luke, one way or the other, and, and it doesn't. It, that's that's not the point. Whatever you think of him, he did a fantastic job last year. Yes, absolutely, and I don't think Hugh was going to do that good of a job. He had Hugh. Hugh's mind was elsewhere, as we can we can point to a myriad. Of pieces of evidence that suggest that, but there's no way that 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 he was going to have the success that Matt did. But let's so let's play this out. If I mean, let's be real. If Steve Robertson doesn't discover the phone calls, or Tom Mars, or some combination thereof, if they don't discover the phone calls, Hugh Freeze does coach last season. And yes, uh, if they let, let's let's play this out for a minute because if they go four and eight, I agree with you. I think Bjork and and and. I think they they fire him. Let's say especially Chase, if they but, beat Stark. But let's say Chase is right. Let's say they go five and seven, and the 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 uh, Fitzgerald injury still happens, and Ole Miss wins the game. Five and seven, Jeffrey. I don't know that he gets fired, given how much money would have been owed him, because what. What you have to factor in is is where in the world would Ole Miss have come up with all of the money that Hugh Freeze would have been due? See, this is where you and I disagree a little bit. I think I think Ross was I think Ross was looking for a way to fire Hugh Freeze. He did not have the political power to fire Hugh Freeze. He needed he needed a slam dunk case. And Robertson did give him the slam dunk. Oh yeah. But I do I do think that I do think that we started hearing more and more rumors and the truth is you can you can cover up you can cover up messes but eventually it's the same thing that got Hugh. He had every opportunity to redact the number that ends up bringing him down. That's the whole point. It's like at a certain point you get he was sloppy. He was sloppy. The reason why Ole Miss got in trouble with recruiting is they were sloppy. Like, yes. He wasn't going to be able to have everything covered up. Yes. I do think that – I do think Ole Miss had reached the point where they were looking for a way to fire Hugh Freeze, but they needed the slam dunk case. And I think that when you started adding the pressure of losing last year and the fact that that Freeze was clearly going – you know, he's, he's this control freak, but when you start – when you 
man, when, when the pressure gets to you, you start making mistakes. And I think that – I think they would have – I don't think if they found this phone call, I think they were going to find something. It was a matter of time. Yeah, you could be right. You could be right. I, that's It's a – it is kind of an interesting hypothetical. I know people don't – I talked to someone very close to Freeze on Sunday who said that Freeze in some weird ways is sort of fortunate that it ended the way that it ended because if he could just get off Twitter, he uh, he would have an opportunity to to get another gig. And, and when he does, he, he these last season and this season won't be held against him in the way that it would if – you know, if he'd gone four and eight or five and seven last year, and then let's just say that my hypothetical's right, just for the sake of it, and that he would have sure. gotten this season, uh, this season would have been, I mean, right now, coming off of the last two weeks, uh, the 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 seat wouldn't be hot. It would be an absolute inferno. Uh, it would be whether he could get through the season, and from a coaching standpoint, he would in many ways be ruined. So, in 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 a lot of the in a lot of ways. The scandal, if he could just get out of his own way and stop the preaching, the uh, the, the scandal might actually save his career a little bit. No, I mean, you and I have talked about it. One of the, you know, outside of the losing the money and I guess the, the scandal, but the truth is it's been, it's been kept – hidden enough to where Freeze for the first time kind of asked this word that if he would have had before, it would have really helped him out, plausible deniability. And the fact that he's not having to take all these L's and the fact that his name's not getting attached to this, it's allowed him to shape this narrative of he was a better football coach and program runner than the reality was. And oh, so, I agree. And you see it all the time. There's a lot of people that, that say, you know – this team wouldn't be this bad if Hugh Freeze were still there. And and there's no – the truth is it's there's no convincing those those advocates. Why the end of 2016 gets dismissed so easily? Let's take a break in our talk with Jeffrey to tell you about Locker Stockers. Still a few home games to take advantage of that service, including this weekend against Kent State. Take the hassle out of stocking your locker or your suite at Baltimore Way Stadium as they handle purchase and delivery to that area before game day. Give them a call at 662-586-1487. Info at LockerStockers.com and tell them you heard about it on this here podcast. This podcast also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, look no further than Grenada Nissan. They have a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Go in, test drive one today. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry's an Oxford-based REMAX legacy realty agent. He's been in Oxford more than four decades. No one knows the residential and condo market in Oxford better than Harry. Go to his site. He'll prove it to you. It's harryalexander.com. Click on the Properties and Neighborhoods tab. Filter through by what you are looking for. And then send him an email. It's ha at harryalexander.com. Now back to Jeffrey Wright on the Billy's Pecans Hotline. It's a great question. Why, I, recency I, it's, bias it's, it's, is a fascinating thing, man. It, it, uh, it, you know, Chase and I've talked about so many times how often people forget the Texas A and M game last year. Just forget it. Yeah. It's it's as if it did not happen. Um, and you're right. There's there's something about the end of the 2016 season, perhaps because of the NCAA stuff and the draft and. And I don't, I don't know. I, I lose, I lose track of when everything happened, honestly. But there's, there's a, uh, there's a tendency to just, just forget those, those two games. And it was two games. It, it's like, almost even like the second half, the second half of that season, like when they went to LSU and LSU ran for I think seven thousand yards in one game. Pretty sure it was like an SEC record. But like that. I mean that's that's the tr- like I don't understand like that 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 gets completely overlooked. Yeah, it gets overlooked. That I mean, in that Jason and I were talking about that game yesterday off the off the proverbial air. End quote. It's funny how in that game I'm going to defend a kid a minute. Deontay Anderson was a true freshman playing uh-huh. in Baton Rouge, and he got run over by Leonard Fournette, who was a first round draft pick and a pretty good running back. Uh-huh. Um, and according to what I'm told. Anderson was basically hazed the rest of that season in Oxford, harassed, made fun of, because he got trucked by Leonard Fournette. 
the list of people who got trucked by Leonard Fournette's a long one. It is somewhat on the coaching staff that a true freshman safety was out there having to t- tackle him one-on-one in space. Well, and then allowing locker room issues to that extent. Yeah, that exactly. Anything. I mean, the truth is, I think for whatever reason, he got the benefit of the doubt because Shea had that big fourth quarter against Texas A&M, who, by the way, was playing with a walk-on fourth-string quarterback that night. There's, well, there's no doubt that, that Patterson's that game performance finishes, in College Station bought, fr- bought freeze. And Patterson's performance on the in the fourth quarter alone, because yeah, before yeah. that, Shea was very much what Shea is. Made the couple Manziel-like throws, and they win the game. Yep. He had the one big yep. highlight play where he ran to the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. turned back, found the open receiver. I mean, it was a hell of a play. It was a highlight play, and and it and it won a game, too. The, the kid made a field goal at the end to win the game. I guess it was Wonderlick. Made, uh, someone made, yeah, made the kick to win the game, and, and winning, as Newt Lelouch said, is, is so much better than losing, and – yeah, but after that, they went to Vanderbilt and got absolutely blown out and then came home against Mississippi State and got absolutely blown out. Yeah, I, I really think that – I think the answer is that fourth quarter against A&M, which, yet again, much like Hugh Freeze's tenure, turned out to be smoke and mirrors. So, uh, back to LSU, are, are we and, – and Joe Burrow, how – I've already done my mea culpa so on LSU. Game, so I'm, I guess I'm somewhat biased, but I do think when you bet on a game, it does open your eyes. It's a completely different point of view when watching a football game. Gus, Gus is not a good football coach. Like the actual, like in terms of in game, like I'll give him credit. That roster's like he deserves credit for the roster, but he does more. And even Auburn fans will tell you this: he does more to disrupt the flow of a game largely for the same reasons that you did. Like They just want to be so damn smart. But good God, can that guy call a slow-developing dive play that absolutely kills a drive. They get up 11 points. They're losing the turnover battle. They're moving the ball by attacking the perimeter seven, eight yards at a time. And then they, they want to just... I guess it's he wants to like he wants to have like bully ball and he wants to run it down LSU's throat and show that he can. I would have suggested that the three quarters of evidence that came earlier during that game would have suggested the opposite and you might want to just keep doing what you're doing. I just looked at how Auburn found ways to lose. But you do you have to give Burroughs credit. Jay wrote I don't know if y'all saw this, but Jay did a fantastic breakdown of the this first the 75 yard pass play and you got to give Burroughs credit he threw the he threw into triple coverage but he put the ball the only spot where basically what happened could have happened and he kind of he knifed it through two defenders that could have made the play a third defender was coming over and going the opposite way and so based on where Burrow threw the football it it created that seam so the guy could run and score and then you got to give you got to give Ed credit for everything Gus did to impact the outcome of the game negatively Ed largely stood on the sideline he didn't panic and I'll give him credit I thought it was a little dumb at the time trying to settle for a 40 plus yard field goal but man that kid put it right down the freaking middle like it was just honestly like he was kicking in warm-ups so Jeffrey and so uh, not, not to cut you off. Can LSU? Yeah. They've got. You know, we've talked about the middle part of the schedule for a while now. Can they go two and two, or I, I guess better than two and two, which I don't believe, against at Florida, Georgia at home, LSU. Sorry, State at home, and then Alabama at home in a row. They've got those four. So, are we even talking about the Tigers come late November? I mean, late October. I think they can go two and two. I would set the over-under at one and a half. Okay. I mean, the truth is, I think LSU's probably going to – LSU's one of the teams that can make Nick Fitzgerald have to throw the football to beat them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so, if you look at the teams that have had success against Nick Fitzgerald, it's largely the teams that have been able to make him throw to beat them. I think they'll beat Florida. And to me, the swing game – the swing game in the SEC West is, is Mississippi State. For the right to finish second. 
Correct. Yeah. Gus Malzahn, I mean, by here's the way. The real, to me, here's the real question. Neil, you know better than anyone, the tides can turn in Auburn really quickly. You look at the rest of their schedule and you look at where those games are played, they got a lot of tough road games. Yeah. If they lose five games, what's this thing looking like down there? It's, it's but it, it, this is the power of Jimmy Sexton. Jimmy Sexton turned wins over. Playing. He turned wins over Georgia and Alabama into a forty-nine million dollar contract. And really, it was honestly, it was really just the win over Alabama. It's where you realize what Alabama has become. Wins over Alabama create these situations where programs completely lose perspective, completely lose their minds, and wind up giving these massive deals. When in reality, you look at both. I'll at least give Gus credit. The team, he lined up and beat Alabama more so than 2014 Ole Miss lined up and beat Alabama. Yeah. I, I believe that. Yeah, for sure. No, but he, they, they dominated that game in and Auburn it, last year. Right. And in 2015, Ole Miss made a bunch of big plays and took advantage of some turnovers. But if you look at from the moment Jake Coker entered the game, Ole Miss got beat 36-28. I mean, one of the coaching decisions, like we, you know, for all the grief that Saban takes about the kick six, and I get largely the reason why he takes the grief, it's because it directly knocked them out of winning another championship, and it was a loss to Auburn. But the decision to start Cooper Bateman that night was is one of his all-time blunders. Well, yeah, his decision to not go to Tua Tungavaloa against Auburn last year was a blunder. 100%. Uh, you know, Auburn, Auburn stopped Jalen Hurts. Yes, because it's not hard. Just make him throw. Make it, they, and that's what they did. They made him throw, and they have that really good front seven, and, and they, uh, they, they beat the heck out of them. Um, I know you only got about a minute left. Yeah. Does Missouri make this a game in the second half on Saturday? I'm picking so if you look at if you look at the teams other than other than Auburn when they played Georgia in Auburn and obviously Tonga Vailoa's second half, Drew Locke probably had the best game against Georgia as a pure passer. I think his offensive line's been a little better. And for all the Derek Dooley jokes that we make, Derek's done a pretty good job. I mean, they're still scoring they're still scoring forty plus points a game. I just hope Derek understands that every run that he calls on Saturday is a wasted down. Just throw it. Every run he calls is a wasted down. Your best chance to win is that kid. And I'm I'm slowly – I don't love this quarterback draft class, but I think he's my guy in this one. He's impressive. I wouldn't hate him uh, at the next level, I don't think. So uh, who's on the show today? So today uh, we will have some news regarding the Alliance of American Football. We'll have the president and general manager in studio on the Jeff Calkins show. Then I'll be hosting the Eric Hastine show, 2 to 4. Of course, you can stream. You can listen to all the podcasts. You know the whole deal. Uh, and I will have Worldwide Wob, uh, Rob Perez, joining the show. Of course, we'll be discussing everything that has been going on in the NBA in the last 20, I guess now last 14, 15 hours with Jimmy Butler and did he or did he not um, was Jimmy Butler maybe you running some RTOs with Carl Anthony Towns girlfriend we'll have to find out we'll get to the bottom of it does anyone care that uh the Redbirds won the uh triple A uh I think a lot of people are happy for Stubby Clap Stubby Clap is when he was a player here he was wildly popular he's He's had a, he's done a fantastic job here. I think there's a lot of people happy about that, but at the end of the day, it's a triple A. What's player. his next career move? Well, I mean, Schilt's sitting here as the manager of the Cardinals. Yeah. And fair. that's the guy that had the job before him. Yeah, fair enough. All right, have a good day. All right. Thanks to Jeffrey. Reminder that uh, there is much more to uh, Oxford other than uh, what we've been discussing here. That is not real life going on most uh most days, so take advantage of many things this weekend other than the football game. Again, double-decker bus tours go on 2 p.m. every single Friday before Ole Miss home football games. Also tomorrow, the Clear Creek Music and Arts Festival is going on. And on September 25th, the Oxford Art Crawl Wizard of Oz coming to the Forge Center on October 21st. So get your tickets for that. And uh, 
and much, much more, including the uh, Nutcracker coming here fairly soon. We're getting kind of close to Christmas. That is scary from a 2018 standpoint. And then uh, every Thursday night, I don't think they're competing with us. Probably not uh, Not exactly our crowd. Thacker Man- Mountain Radio broadcast in front of a live audience every Thursday at 6 p.m. at uh, at Off Square uh, Books. Although, I'll tell you, I did have somebody uh, last Saturday tell me I was going to come to your show, but y'all are on Thacker Mountain night, Neil. So maybe we Maybe we do have a crossover there that I'm not uh, not aware of. But you, you don't can, think there's a lot of brawls that spill out from Thacker Mountain? I'm assuming less than at the Lyric at 2 o'clock <laughs> on some morning. So anyway, for additional uh, events, again, tons going on in Oxford. Happy to uh, partner with them now. Visit OxfordMS.com slash events. The Wizard of Oz gets people fired up. I'm just hey, going to tell I mean, you. And, you know, start feeling bad for the Scarecrow, and here we go. Who's your favorite character on The Wizard of Oz? Uh, oh, I like the lion. He cracks yeah, me up. I like up. the lion, too. Yeah. He's my favorite. The Wicked, the wicked Witch of the West, right? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, speaking of tonight, tonight at 6, the Ole Miss soccer team returns to the pitch. They take on the Tennessee Vols. Admission is free, so bring the family out and enjoy some SEC soccer. The Ole Miss football team, as you may have heard, returns to the vault on Saturday. They take on Kent State at 11 a.m., Tickets still remain and can be purchased by visiting OleMissTicks.com. Mark your calendars for the inaugural hole-in-one at the vault on Sunday from 2 to 4 as part of the Ole Miss Year of the Fan. Children in grades 8 or below, Ole Miss students, and adults over the age of 22 will have an opportunity to hit shots at various targets on Hollingsworth Field for a chance to earn prizes. To sign up, visit OMYearOfTheFan.com. The uh, podcast is also brought to you by the Oxford Park Commission. Youth basketball registrations right around the corner. Actually, it's going on right now, I should say. I'm sorry. Began September the 4th. It goes through the end of this month. Sign up your son or daughter. I signed up Carson the other day. He's pretty pumped. Uh, for one of their leagues, age range is 5 to 15. The cost is $50. Uh, last year, more than 600 kids took part in the leagues, and the numbers are expected to be similar this year. So don't miss your opportunity to sign up. Uh, go go do it today at OPC. It's OxfordParkCommission.com. Podcast also brought to you by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing in Memphis. You're getting local underwriting. Understand your market. A leader in condo financing and the float down option. So since uh, everybody's fleeing the town and everything's available now all of a sudden, Community Mortgage, 662-234-27. Zero four or J Lo J L O W E at community mtg dot com. I'll uh I'll have the content a little later today. I, I'm 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 gonna bring it to you. I tell you, we've uh, probably gonna have a media favorite. We got Jacquez Jones, the linebacker, for the first time last night, and he was exceptional from an interview standpoint. So, Good. Yeah, it was really it's good. Positive. One of the media relations people walked over and was like, "So how how was he?" I'm like, "Great, bring him every day, please. Thank you. I'll I'll take him. He was uh." He was good. He was honest. So, uh, again, he was uh, what do you say? kind of a new face. You know, he's excited. Freshman getting to play. I mean, sure. he's pumped up. I mean, you know, the, the the true freshman that's been in games for three weeks, he's not really the guy to go, hey, what's wrong? Tell me how to fix it. You know, it's not really his place at this point. So, he said, you know, it's a lot. He said he credited his coach um, in high school, was a guy that formerly had been in Auburn maybe, so he had to – some semblance of a college system in high school to at least have a rough interpretation. Said that's helping a lot. Um, said really speed of game has not affected him as much as he thought it was. It's the uh, it's the mental side and the 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 necessary preparation outside of the the practice that's causing the most uh, transition time at this point. So it's big boy football. Yeah, 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 yeah. He uh, said it really hadn't sunk in yet that he's playing as much as he is in the uh, the first three games, and at least according to Pro Football Focus, he's graded out really, really well. He's played well through uh, through three weeks, so he'll probably see an advanced a bit of snaps. Also, uh, media relations had said they thought Bean Dukes had an injury while he was held out on Saturday. I asked Matt Luke about it yesterday. He said that Bean Dukes was completely healthy. He just did not play on Saturday. So, there's that. Well, credit to Matt. I was like, so Bing Duke's fully healthy, ready to go? And he kind of looked at me, and I said, well, Saturday he didn't get any snaps. He goes, yeah, he just uh, wasn't in our game plan. It's like, okay. He's, he struggles in space. Yeah. They feel like with Ruggs and Jones, they have more speed out there, frankly. So. Uh, our 
already told you what was on it for the most part, but uh, Ole Miss released its baseball schedule yesterday. Um, just to reiterate, they've got home dates with uh, Long Beach State, East Carolina. They open the season against Wright State. And then from an SEC standpoint, they miss Georgia, they miss Vanderbilt, and they miss South Carolina this season. They pick Florida back up. They've got a two-week uh, road trip to Louisville in the midweek on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they have a weekend series at Tulane, which for the most part has been what everyone's been the most excited about, regardless of all the home games. Uh, in three out, or th- uh, sorry, uh, in my story this morning, three and out, uh, I had baseball on my mind, I guess. I looked at those stats that we gave you earlier in the week from an Ole Miss defensive standpoint, so you can peruse those at your uh, availability. Also, I uh, wrote that I've talked to a lot of people about fall ball starting this week just in normal fan conversations, and I still believe fully it's going to be a meaningless baseball season from a regular season standpoint, so I detail some of those things this morning as well. And then uh, I gave a little longer version of the uh, the mascot story that I discussed on the podcast earlier in the week with Carly Ann. So that up on the site this morning, herbalgrove.com. You'll be happy to know that I was watching something uh, on one of the sites that covers the Thunder. And they had done a story about a store, I guess, that Russell Westbrook's wife has opened. Okay. It's a very baby-oriented store. I don't know if you heard Russell Westbrook and his wife, Nina. I'm sure they're listening. Congratulations. They're having twin girls. Uh, anyway, Russell's uh, young son, Noah, his favorite song is also Baby Shark. That song, which I, she even woke up this morning. I was in my office. I was finishing, and I could hear her walking down the hall doing the doo 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 like thing. Yeah. Uh, um, it has 1.7 billion views on Facebook. I mean, I'm sorry, on YouTube. I saw Russell and his, uh, his young son sing the song. 1.7 billion so really, I mean, Ole Miss picked the exact right mascot to take advantage of the uh, the market with the song. And there the, you go, and genius. Else. It really was. I mean, well I'm, planned out. Might need Michael back on the show just to discuss the uh, the meetings that were required to get to that point. But um, you know, anyway, that was that. Uh, I got a uh, tour uh, or somewhat of a tour of the new building at Swayze Field yesterday. Um, saw some of that. Really, really well done. Duh, it was going to be, but you know. Everything from a fan standpoint has been really good for about 10 years now. Player amenity-wise, they were really, really lacking. I mean, everybody kind of rolls their eyes, but it was true. From a, from a, from a training complex standpoint to a, a weight room for the baseball team. The to, stuff that wins recruiting battles. To locker rooms, to lounge areas, to, to impressive things along those lines. They were lagging. I mean, it, I'm talking like Missouri bad, like really bad. Um, because it was built in 1989, and there wasn't there wasn't really room to expand the way the the the, the stadium was structured. So they've added this uh, this new area. It is large. They have a dedicated weight room that overlooks the field. They have a locker room that is much 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 bigger, much nicer. As you recall, Ole Miss will be shifting to the first base dugout this season because of the way the locker room and the building is constructed. Oh, that's right. Um, so yeah, because the locker room now directly behind the first base dugout. Um. You pitching an indoor, hitting indoor, they're probably t- two to three times the size of the previous one, um, best I can tell. So uh, a lot of things there, the weight room with plenty of machines as well as even like a sprinting area where they could push sleds and ladders indoors without having to be outside for any of that stuff. So I think everything's pretty much hit on this. I don't know what's next. I'm sure there'll be something because even Kentucky is spending $40 billion on a baseball complex right now. But, really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Florida's building a new stadium right now. Yeah, they needed one. Um, states finally opening their full version of, of Duty Noble's re, it's re, huge. redo. It, <laughs> it's excessive in a lot of ways, but I'll tell you what, they got perfectly right, and it's something they could do since they started over. The 360 sight line where you can see from everywhere, including in the concourses, is one of the new stadium things that is a complete necessity if you're building a park with a brand new infrastructure. Um, it's it's really good. Florida's going to have something very similar to where you're, if you're in the concession stand, if you're in the outfield, wherever it is, you can see the field of action as you're uh, as you're as you're participating. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's good. Um, I was you know state was only halfway done last year, so I didn't get much of a look at it, but I could tell it was going to be impressive from a design standpoint when it was uh, when it was finished. But it was kind of awkward last year, like on TV. Well, when you're in a media, it was in a trailer. I mean, you couldn't see. You were just in this little construction trailer thing up on the burn, and you're hoping to get a look over. I remember last year I was the only media member that got left outside from a seat standpoint. I remember hearing about this. I was not happy. That's I was what I heard. not real pleased. I 
you had your AT and T customer service moment. I kind of did. Like I, I, I always feel bad later, but my temper will go, and I get really pissed off in the moment. I was not nice to that MSU sports information guy whatsoever because I, I really needed to know how he set up the assignments from a standpoint of visiting media, and he did not have much of an answer for me, which I realized later was. He put no thought in it whatsoever. Well, your role in this here potato log podcast probably did not help your standing. You don't think so? I'm guessing. You think not. that impacted things? Could have. You think so? I'm. We're there, gonna stick his ass outside. There are some people on the uh, in the on the beat there and in, in Startville that are not fans of this here potato log podcast, from what I can tell. Well, because we've made some friends over the years. Because we've made some enemies. What pissed me off was no one else was even there from Ole Miss. So there was like ten, well, maybe one or two people. I'm not saying none. But there were like 10 empty seats in the thing. And I was like, well, I'm just going to sit here. This guy's not coming. Well, that's his seat. I'm like, he's not coming. Well, he said he was. Well, he's not. Sorry to tell you, he's not showing up. What he was trying to say to you was, listen, buddy, I know you might have a potato log podcast, but that does not entitle you to a seat in this here press box. And, Go and, sit and, your ass in the trailer. And he's correct. Well, no, I, that was the. I was trying to get in the trailer. The other option was out in the cold in the twelve degree weather behind home plate. Whatever you knew what I meant. Maybe he was trying to give me a better sight line behind home plate. I could see the field. Maybe of play he was better. hoping that you would come down with some sort of illness, and it would shut down this here potato log oh. podcast. It's a double header too. It'd been really cold. It was that cold. Day. I remember it was a double header because there was spring football and it was not springy. No, it was really cold that day. Yeah. I mean, it was like overcoat, toboggan, gloves. Yeah. Like, I was I was Eskimo stuff. Yeah. It's always like that if you go to state. Because you go for football, you know, at the end of the year, you're freezing. I mean, it, it, it is the defy logic moment of my year is it will be 18 degrees in that press box. The wind will be blowing in straight into our faces. And half the media will be, hey, you got any more of that Muscadine Ripple ice cream? And I'm like, it is 16 degrees outside. You can't feel your fingers, but they're just – I mean, ingesting that muscadine ripple nonstop in the press box. That is an odd thing. Eat the, the oh, it's constant. Eating just basically a gallon of it. Yeah, it's oh. good. Look, they do a great job with ice cream and cheese. No, nothing, no, nothing against them. Yeah, but on baseball in the spring when it's a nice day, yeah, hey, give me a cup. I'm all about it. Let's 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 enjoy. Watch a little, watch a watch a little a little hardball. It's all good. But eh, eh. Not so interesting. It's my favorite story. I think it was Hugh Kellenberger was talking when he covered the Big Ten in Ohio State or somewhere with their media members. One of the press boxes had a McFlurry machine, and it like <laughs> six minutes left in the first half, all the media just go line up. And he was like, guys, what are y'all doing? Oh, we got to get our McFlurry. And it was like literally so bad they'd line yeah. up like halfway through the second quarter. It, it's <sighs> Every stereotype you could imagine was coming true right in front of your eyes. Wardrobe from the 1960s. Open toe shoes. <laughs> And just giant plates full of food. Yeah, and ice cream. And ice cream. And ice cream. Something like that. <laughs> so again. The uh, podcast is brought to you by Robert Gambrell and Associates. Robert knows that many of the people listening to this podcast will never need a bankruptcy attorney or a social security disability attorney. However, many of you may be interested in reviewing your financial situation to consider asset protection. It's part of what a good bankruptcy attorney does. Also, many of you have friends and or relatives that get into difficult financial situations. Gambrell and Associates helps many people work through their times of hardship, whether that results in filing a bankruptcy petition or working to avoid a bankruptcy filing. Uh, whatever your needs are, you, your relatives, or friends can get a free consultation for one hour or more to help make your decision on what is best for you. Look up Robert Gambrell on avvo.com or superlawyers.com or give him a call at 662-281-8800. The podcast also brought to you in part, pardon me, in part by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. Have you been thinking about that golf trip with the guys that you'll never forget or maybe that anniversary trip that she'll never forget? Whether you're dreamed of uh, playing St. Andrews or sitting at a cafe in Paris, talk to John Edwards before you try to do it yourself. Why use John? Well, he's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John traveled the globe 37 years before getting into the travel business. 
He knows the extra attention that is needed to make a special trip, one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. So if you're thinking about going with the boys to Pebble Beach or taking her to Napa for the vacation of her dreams, call John, give him some parameters and a budget, and let him give you some options. And know this, you do not have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. Call John at 901 494-3387 494-3387 or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net First time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. I might need some pharmaceuticals by the end of this week the way it's going. Tyson Drugs could help me out with that. TysonDrugs.com. They have an app. They're located in downtown Holly Springs 662-252-2321 They got all the... Sil- Sildenafil you could ever want. And they're also you now. Need? No, I don't need that. Any okay. other things. Okay. Also now in Oxford, GM Pharmacy on South Lamar in Oxford. They deliver local in the Oxford area. I see the car buzzing around town all the time. Hopefully, doesn't get caught up in any drive-bys at 2 a.m. The way things are going. So here we are. Uh, as I said, there's scrimmages this weekend for uh, fall baseball. If you're uh, if you're curious, and I think pretty much every pitcher is going to pitch here in the last couple of years. They've had a lot of guys shut down from rest in the summers they didn't really have a lot of guys throw a lot of innings in the summer so i think everybody's gonna gonna play i think they're healthy for the most part pretty uh pretty good freshman class coming in as well so those uh those scrimmages starting at 2 30 on friday is the uh the first date if you're curious and then in october i think the 13th and the 27th to play delta state and then uh and then little rock no other reactions whatsoever from those games if they lose those games is there even still a season um I mean, is it possible that just Bianco just gets fired right then? Do you fire Lafferty? What do you do? I mean, do you, you have to send – got to fix something, don't you? got to send a message that that's not acceptable, we got right? got four months before this thing really starts. we got to – The message needs to get sent early. Got to run it up on Delta State on October 13th. Oh, I think you send a message, yeah. I'm about sending messages in fall baseball. Are you? Big believer in message sending. Maybe we can get Carl on the show and ask about messages getting sent in October. Think he liked that line of questioning? So if you lose to Delta State, dot, 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 If you dot, lose dot. to Delta State, Carl, do you plan to resign effective immediately? <laughs> and if not, why not? Yes, apparently you did not recruit anyone. D2 talent. You won 13-1, to one, but you gave up one in the seventh. What the hell happened? And are you going to fix it? That's one of the kids you're cutting from the 35, right? Okay, good. Can we go back to that Tennessee Tech day? I want to oh, talk about God. that some more. When when fans actually get in the moment, there's going to be excitement, right? It's just going to come with really heavy doses of cynicism and sarcasm. I think it is going to be the most cynical, sarcastic season you've ever covered. And it's completely unfair. It is what it is. 14 was similar because Mike was actually on the hot seat in 14. He's not on the hot seat. This is just a fan base pissed off. Yeah, no, he's not on the hot seat. His contract got extended back out to four years. Yeah, he's 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 absolutely not on the hot seat. Which, after all of the things that we've talked about on this podcast today, that will be the one that gets people stirred up. He's not. He's not on the hot seat. Did you watch that SEC short of LSU trying to get rid of his, his hot seat at the yard sale the other day? Uh-uh. Did you not see this? No. It was really, really funny. I mean, th- those are always pretty good. You've seen them, right? Yeah. It's the Alabama guy, you know, whatever. Yeah. They're all they're all great. But uh, so LSU is having a yard sale, and it's like it's guy walks up, and he goes, what's that? And the guy goes, oh, that's brand-new golf clubs. And he goes, no, next to it. He goes, oh, that's our hot seat. And it's like this little thing, and you can, there's flames coming up off the seat of it. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, hot seat or whatever. And he goes, oh. And it's a uh, – who was it at the time? I forget. I guess it was Arkansas. And he was like, well, how much is it? And he, was, he told him. And he goes, well, I'll give you this. He goes, nah, nah. And they're like bartering back and forth. And the Alabama guy walks up. And it's like a minute of of Alabama not understanding this is ever required anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hot seat. Going, There's people that don't love their head coach. Like he's doing yeah, this whole yeah. can't compute it thing. And <laughs> while they're talking, this one guy, this guy comes back. And he goes, I'll give you $50 or whatever. And he's like, no, it's 75 And while he's talking, the Florida State guy walks up and he's just got the bags full of money and sits it down on the table. <laughs> and takes it. Yeah, he hauls it off or whatever because yeah. the guy from Auburn like walks up at one point and, he, and his wife's with him and he's like, yeah, he goes, you had one of those a couple years ago and you stopped using it or something. Like, it's whatever. It's, it, it was really, really well done. I was, I was, I was, I was oh, cracking good. up. Yeah, it was, 
it was good. All, all those are pretty, pretty funny. There at the end of last year, they really hit their stride when they had like Georgia and Alabama getting on the train, going to the playoff together, and all the other SEC schools out wishing them well, except yeah. being very sarcastic yeah, on the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> they did that one. It's uh, it's good. But yeah, their uh, their latest one was uh, was at Orgeron because. Uh, they did UPS before the season of like, hey, here's the packages for every team. And for Ole Miss, it was like, oh, here's your new mascot costume. And then uh, he goes, and here's some matches if you'd like to burn it. Like immediately. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, God. But oh, it worked. God. It worked in at least one house. I got a guy on the internet that says that, uh, it worked at his house too, our, uh, our one of our buddies, Dan, on the message board. So yeah, uh, Breaking kids like mascots. Yeah, who cares what an adult thinks? It does not matter. Kids like mascots. At the Cubs convention, I walked. I watched little kids just little kids completely disinterested in Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, Javi Baez, John Lester, and fascinated by Clark the Cub. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Clark. Is it Clark. That's his name. Okay. All right. Come hang out with us tonight. Again, food and drink specials. We'll keep gabbing about whatever you'd like to talk about. If you have questions, you can tweet us at them, and we'll uh, we'll answer those as well. Why not? That's actually a good idea. Uh, yeah, do that. And then uh, Blue Delta Jeans, uh, we'll give the trivia question. Get some Holland and Sherry, the lightest things you'll ever put on. Very, very impressed with, uh, with the durability of those last Saturdays. I wore them to the game. So uh, with Blue Delta Take advantage of uh, the gift certificates that you can win through the trivia questions or just head by, see them for yourself. I bet if you uh, let them get measured, let them give me or give them a chance, you'll uh, you'll be satisfied, you'll buy in, and you won't just have one pair. So remember Blue Delta uh, over kind of behind the Lyric as we're uh, talking about it a lot today on the uh, the Oxford Square. You can tell them we sent you or you can, you can even get online, build your own pair with BlueDeltaJeans.com. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you tonight. And plenty of content at rebelgrove.com in the meantime.